Five, four. Falcon is supersonic. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for once again joining me for tea time. Today we have a little bit of fireside, and that is it. The smokiness of the lap song. Absolutely love it. Love it, guys. Love it. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, cup of coffee, maybe something harder. Depends on what part of the planet you're on, as I always say, or maybe what time zone you're in. So today we're going to be talking about Starlink, Starlink 2.0. Five, four. They've launched up some new satellites. These satellites are a little bit different than the old version one satellites. These satellites actually have lasers on them. Space Center carrying our stack of 49 Starlink satellites. Which allow them to communicate from satellite to satellite data at the speed of light. Falcon is supersonic. I'll get into why that's good, but today we're going to be talking more about speed and how speed has gotten better or how speed has gotten worse over the last 30 days. I've done some hard resets of the modem. I'm going to do another one today. The last one I did was about 14 days ago. So I figured two weeks later, we're going to do a reset. Well, you're here with me, and then we're going to test the speeds to see if anything has changed. Hopefully, things have. Now, if you don't know, Starlink is just out of beta, and what I found out from the internals over there at SpaceX is that every once in a while, you need to do a hard reset. That means a factory reset on the machine itself, all right, on your router, not just a reboot an actual reset, factory reset, where you do everything from scratch. You put in your Wi-Fi, your SSID, and your password and whatnot. And this allows it to download all the latest stuff. It should do it anyways, but this just starts basically from scratch. Now I'm gonna stay remote here so that I can walk over to the unit itself on the other side of the studio so we can do that hard reset together and see what ends up happening. But before I do, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my ebooks as of yet, go check them out. You can find them over at jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Some of you guys are going to be like, where is he dressed like that today? If you're new, I'm in South Florida, so it is like almost never cold. But today it's like 40 degrees outside. And then tomorrow they're saying like wind chill factor of 20. What the hell is that? I don't have blood for that. Anyways, so what we're going to do first is do a speed test here on the computer. Just so you know, this computer is directly linked to the Starlink through an Ethernet adapter. If you're using a version 2 Starlink, buy the Ethernet adapter. It's 20 bucks. buy the Ethernet adapter. This way you're not on Wi-Fi. You don't have to worry about there's a Wi-Fi problem, conflict, or something like that. It's just stupid to use a Wi-Fi signal when you have the ability to use a hard line, a Cat5, Cat6, Cat7 cable. With version one of Starlink, you don't need to buy that adapter because on the back of the router, there is an ethernet port. They lose it on Gen 2. Anyway, so let's go ahead and do some speed tests. I'm gonna head over to the other side of the studio and move on. All right, so let's go over to speedtest.net. It says finding optimal servers, and then it comes up with this being in Virginia. So it looks like this server out of Virginia is the closest to me because we're getting a ping millisecond of 47. So I think what we're going to use is this Ashburn, Virginia location. Even though the up speed is not that great, we're seeing down speeds of up to 300 with a 47 millisecond ping. We're going to do five tests in the exact same server and see what we end up with in average. And after this, we're going to go and reboot. And as you can see, the numbers are so different. One time we'll get 300 meg down. This time we're only at about 162 down. I'm writing them all down on a little pad so we can do this average. But now this time the up speeds are a little bit better. The last time the up speed was 13. This time we're getting over 20. We're up to 21, 22, 23. I'm just going to take an average of these numbers. So we're going to do a couple of more and see where we end up with. And then we're going to go and do that reset, that factory reset. And I'll show you how to do that also. So now we're on the fourth one. So, so far we have 239, 301, 163. Those are the down speeds so far. And now this time, once again, we see a 47 millisecond ping, but we're only getting 100 and let's call it 115 meg down. But 115 meg compared to what I used to have here, which was 15 meg, we're talking 100 meg faster. So I can't complain about that. So we're at 115 meg by 
let's call it 18 meg because we're going to round it down. We're going to do one more and this will be five and then we'll average it out and see what we end up with. So once again, this one is a little bit slower. We're at about 140, 130. Nothing fantastic on the down speed, but we have a 46 millisecond ping. That is really good. So this one we'll say is 130. And let's see what we end up with on the up speed. And that is acceptable. 20 meg up, not bad. Just to give you a perspective, my down speed was, like I said, 15 meg, but my up speed used to be 1.5 meg. 1.5 guys, this is 20, 1.5. <laughs> We're gonna get into these speeds a little bit more once we do this reset, but let's take a look at what this average is out to. I'm gonna pull up the calculator on my phone. So we're sitting at, can you see that? Let's get that glare out of there. Let's call it 190, not bad, 190 down. So as far as the up speed, we're seeing about 17 meg up. That is the average doing five tests. Now remember, I'm going to make sure that we go to this exact same server when we do the retesting. So all right, let's go ahead and head over to the other side of the studio. All right, people, we're over here on the comfy couch. Um, before I get into the router over here and show you how to do the hard reset, the factory reset, I just wanted to reiterate, when I first installed the router and got the Starlink set up, the numbers were a lot better more often, let's say, but now they're a little bit lower by, I would say maybe about 50 to 100 megs sometimes on the upper end. And as far as the upload, we were getting about 26 to 28 and sometimes up to about 38 on the up speed. And recently we've been only getting up to about 20. So we saw the numbers, we know what they're at as of right now, doing this hard reset we're gonna see if that actually cures anything. Does it fix anything? Once again, this is pretty much like a two week to 30 day review on Starlink. How has it been faring? What are the speeds that we were getting before? What are we getting now after the reset? So we're gonna check that out. Let me go and bring you over to the router so you can see what it looks like. So, all right, this is the router. Right here, there's your Starlink, let's say Gen 2. Oh, did you see this? See, this is one of my problems, guys. This is one of my problems. This ADD thing, I see this, I see the butterfly, and I have to touch it. <laughs> I always talk to you guys about this camera. I love this. You see what that is? That is a Minolta SRT 102. I absolutely love this camera. I still use this for doing some of my fine artwork. Um, I've run a lot of black and white through it. Anyways, let's put this back in here. It's a whole bunch of crap. I have so many cameras. This is just like a few that we just have on display, but all right. So up here, we can see over here is the, this is once again, the generation two Starlink. Gen one does not look like this. And if you look on the back of this, there is no ports. See that? Absolutely zero ports. And that is why you need to buy the dongle, the ethernet dongle. And this is what it looks like right here. So this ethernet dongle allows you to get a hard wire out of this generation two. So once again, if you have a gen two buy this dongle, it only costs about, let's say, I think it's $20. So buy the dongle so that you can get a hard link out of the gen two. If not, you're going to end up with only having Wi-Fi. Anyways, this is the setup. I won't get into the TP link. This is a managed server that I installed so that I can now take control over the data that's coming out of this. So we're sharing data across a network and then I'm able with this, say which ports actually get full blown speed, which gets reduced speed and whatnot. For example, the TV or anything that's not really mission critical is not going to get as fast speed as my desktop or any of the other servers that are in here. All right, so this is really important to me. If you guys are interested, I can show you how to configure this. Um, I did a video on it, but I can get in a little deeper. Also, some folks are asking me what this is over here, this TP link with a PoE injector. This right here is what runs the secondary internet. We have two internet sources. We have AT&T and we have Starlink. This runs the secondary 
and then this patches to the outside of the studio to be able to create a mesh network. If you want to know how to create a mesh network, I can get into that also. There's a bunch of different products that we use. Matter of fact, I have a pile sitting here. Um, we have this Armada. This is one of the head controllers. Um, this is the unit that we have inside of the building, business class type of controller. But I'm not gonna get into that in this video. But if you want me to get into it, I will. So. As far as this goes, what we need to do is unplug this router three times. Unplug it, plug it back in, unplug it, plug it back in three times. Now, in the last video, I said I don't like doing that because you don't want to jack this thing in and out, in and out, and out. So I have it on this strip. So I can click that strip three times and it will shut this off, turn it back on, shut it off, turn it back on three times. This will reboot this from scratch and then we will have to go and do the factory resetting of it. Put in our SSID as well as our password and that is it. So now before we do this reboot, I like to put the system into stow mode. What it does is it takes the unit itself up on the top of the building and locks it into place so that it's not moving around when we're doing this whole process. Do you need to do that? No, I'm just anal retentive, so I like to do it. So I'm putting it into stow, and then we'll do the three on and offs. Not a big deal, but let's go ahead and do it. So we're gonna hit this once. There it is, off, and as we can see, the light turns off, that's why I put it on here. Turn it back on, that's once, twice, three times, and you could do it a fourth time, just so that it knows that there's three quick consecutive on-offs. This will now say, hey, wait a second, it's time to reboot. And that's what it's doing right now. So, all right, we are back to the other side of the studio behind my desk. Now, we're not going to have any internet connection as of right now. So we need to rebuild this basically from scratch. It's factory reset. Not a big deal, but I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. We have the screen record going so you can see me do it. So we're gonna to go to 192.168.1.1 and it'll immediately come up with a setup screen. It will say Starlink and as you can see here, it says create network or skip this step. What we're gonna do is create our network. This is our SSID, right? So we come over here and I call my unit Mr. Bevel. So we type in Bevel. As far as the password, I'm gonna type that in real quick. And of course we will blur that out and then click create. And that is it, very simple. It shows your network name or your SSID. It shows the password that you used. And then it says reconnect to your network using the new Wi-Fi network name. So now that's all we have to do is go to our connections and decide which connection are we going to connect to. What we're going to do is connect to the bevel because that is the one that we just created. Now, when we click on that, it says, do you want to connect automatically? I'm going to select yes and press connect. Most likely this is going to auto connect me because I did not change the SSID and it did. Now, if you did change the name to something else, it's now going to prompt you for the password because it doesn't have it. Obviously, since, like I said, the SSID remained the same, it immediately just introduced that into the mix and said, let's try this password and the password worked because I didn't change the SSID, nor did I change the password. So now we're reconnected. Let's go ahead and open our speed test to see where we're at. So once again, we're gonna keep everything the same. We're gonna stick to this Missica Network Inc. over in Ashburn, Virginia, and let's do some testing. So let's do the first one and see what we end up with. We have our numbers. I already wrote them on a pad. I'm gonna put another set together. Now we're seeing a ping of 54. The last time we were getting 46, I believe. So it's a little bit slower ping, but let's see what ends up happening as far as the connection speed. So during our first test, we got 243 down and 23.4 up. Let's call it 20. We're gonna round down instead of rounding up. Let's do another one. Now this time we see that we have 46 milliseconds instead of 54 milliseconds. And I was telling you about this before. It really depends from test to test to test, how long does it take to ping to the location? So basically it's like ping pong, ping pong. Think about our router 
going out to Mr. Bevel, and then from Mr. Bevel up into the sky, hitting one of the satellites. From the satellite, going over down to a ground station. From that ground station, that ping is now sent over to Virginia, Ashburn, Virginia, this Missica network. They get that packet and say, oh, we received it. Let's reply. They reply, and now that ping goes all the way back in reverse to this router. And that all takes... 46 milliseconds. Think about how quick that is, guys. Of course, we always want quicker and quicker and quicker. And if you're on, for example, a fiber optic network, instead of 46 milliseconds, it would probably be like five milliseconds, eight milliseconds, sometimes even zero milliseconds, depending how far away that server is that you're pinging. So anyways, what are we getting here? We have 46 milliseconds. We're getting 208 down and only, let's call it 10 up. That's pretty poor, guys. That's pretty poor. Let's run another one. Now, this time you can see we're getting 110 milliseconds. That's pretty bad. That's probably about the worst that I've seen in a long time. Most of the time I've seen Starlink sit around anywhere between 38 milliseconds and about 59 milliseconds, 60 milliseconds. That's the normal or the average that I see. And as you can tell, look at these numbers. We're getting only 134, I say only, <laughs> you know my baseline. We're getting 134 down and let's call it nine up, pretty bad. Let's go and do another one. And this is why it's so important to do multiple tests and then take an average. So here we can see 46 milliseconds with 200, let's call it 259 on the down and 12 up. Once again, this is really slow when it comes to the up speed. We have one more test. Let's go ahead and do it. So this time we're seeing 47 milliseconds. Once again, that is kind of the average with, let's call it 248 on the downside, 16 meg up. As we can see, we're not in the 20s very often. The upside is just not as quick as it used to be. Why is that? I really don't know. I'm going to go and do an average and see what we come out with and then take a look at the average from before and the average now. So as far as the down speed, we're getting, let's see, can you see that? Yeah, 218.4. So we're just going to round it off once again to 218. Now let's go ahead and do the up speed. Now in the up speed, we're getting 13.4 guys, 13.4. So I'll just round it down to 13. Now, when I take a look at these numbers between the two, when we first started, we had 190 on the down average. And now we have 218 average on the down speed. On the up speed, we had an average of 17 meg up. Now we have an average of 13 meg up. Now, the first time I did the factory reset about two weeks ago, I believe it was, it did help. The numbers got better. But... Obviously, now, two weeks later, there must be nothing that has changed up there with either the software or the ground stations or whatever. Everything must have remained the same in the last 14 days because nothing really changed. We're sitting at that 200 meg down, let's call it, and close to 15 to 20 meg up. Whereas we used to be about 50 meg higher on the down speed and about, let's call it 10 meg higher on the up speed from when we first started. So why that is, I really don't know. I'll probably end up sending a message into Starlink, their tech support, let them know the findings so that they can make note of it to see if there's something going on with a ground station near me. Now, once again, we are now in Starlink 2.0, where we have these lasers that are now communicating from satellite to satellite. What that means, guys, is instead of having all of these ground stations all over the place, they can cut the amount of ground stations needed by half, let's say. So, for example, if my ground station is here really close to me in West Palm now, whereas it used to be in Orlando, three-hour drive away, that would be really great. But if the constellation that is coming by, the satellites that are coming by me are extremely far away, let's say closer to Georgia or here in Virginia, let's say, very far away, then the information would have to go down to a ground station in, let's say, Virginia, and then get patched back to my ground station here in West Palm. So once again, that adds to the milliseconds, it adds to the latency, which adds to the time. So you'll end up with slower upload and you'll end up with slower download. 
So as they now have the 2.0 that is starting to come online, I think that the speeds are going to get better and the latency is also going to be reduced. So instead of seeing an average of, let's say, 45 to 55 on the latency, milliseconds, maybe we'll start seeing 30s or even 20s as far as the latency. Latency is everything. The faster you can get those ping pongs back, the faster the data can get to you, obviously so, right? So I'm really excited about Starlink 2.0. We'll see what ends up happening. I'll probably do another one of these in about two weeks to a month. We'll do a factory reset on Mr. Bevel again and then see where we're at. See if we're getting faster, slower, what is going on. I'm gonna keep you guys up to date so that you can make an informed decision. Is Starlink for you or is it not? So everyone, I hope you've gotten some value out of this video. If you have, please throw the video a thumbs up. Also share it with your friends, family, colleagues, or anyone else that's interested in Starlink. Share it. Also, if you have not subscribed to the channel as of yet, please do so and click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That would be awesome. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Love you all. We'll see you in the next one.